anyone? Sunday, June 14th, 2020. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. We've been determined the length of episode number 558. And guess what, folks? We're going to talk about something, and yes, we're let's talk about Just eat it, eat it, eat it. food. Food. So, Gary, I, I, how did this come up? Because you're better at telling tales. Um. Well, so the reality is, after years of talking about politics, sex. Uh, even religion now and then and I'm pretty much sure everything in between I was like we really haven't ever really talked officially about food now don't get me wrong we have talked about food plenty of times but it's always been like under the subtext of another topic Mm. our our (laughs) pre-show or a (laughs) pre-show or a post-show like I'm gonna go for some food yeah um Anybody who's ever played C.O.L. Bingo probably knows one of your card scores is going to be one of Jeff's favorite dishes because he talks about it often enough. It's a recipe that he makes. He has to go by the ingredients for. Um, But, like, I don't think we've ever actually really kind of broken it down and talked about stuff. And I was like, Mm -hmm. I don't even remember exactly uh, how the idea sprung to me. It was a couple of weeks ago. Glad you were talking about Taco Bell. Ago. Yeah, we're still conversation. We were talking about Taco Bell. Just went <gasps> on and on, went into a rabbit hole about Taco Bell. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, I'm not, well, I'm so- not seeing the t- the Chalupa pops. <laughs> the what? I don't think we have this thing. What the Chalupa centipede thing? <laughs> you know, we were talking about the like you had the tacos, the burrito boxes, but you didn't have the chalupa boxes or something like that. It was a, oh, yes, yes, yes. Party packs. By the way, know. so I learned my lesson. If I need to get the burrito box, this is what the, this is what this all started out. Mm-hmm. We're going to get to this in a moment, folks. I apologize. We're going. We're still talking about food. We're at least relatively on topic. Ugh, yeah, <laughs> we're rimming around the outside. We'll we'll get to the. <laughs> So, come on, Gary. What? <laughs> Put a little sugar rim on it. I bet it tastes, tastes great. Um, so, <laughs> the but the thing is, is that I had been talking about how I was so excited because Taco Bell finally released a burrito box because all of their boxes seem to have fucking tacos in them. And it pissed me off. And I just want burritos. I'm not a big, I'm not a fan of hard shell tacos. They tend to like make a mess. They go everywhere. They like, I don't, I'm like, I understand why people love tacos. I'm like, it's just a mess. Just a problem. Are you eating your tacos? So I learned they came out with a burrito box for 10 bucks. And I was like, sweet. Cause you get uh, three chicken burritos and three uh, beef burritos. Not like burritos and don't leak. What's that? Not like burritos don't leak. Uh, Moving on. Not if Moving you know on. how to eat them, right? It's kind of like, if you know how to work foreskin, right, it's all good. <laughs> so the the thing is, is I was like, okay, like, what are we doing? Uh, I mean, and to be fair, since you just said that, Jeff, I want to circle back to that. So, <laughs> no, because like, this is a weird thing that I've noticed, like, um, because I've like gone to Taco Bell with my dad and I've ha- like, gotten burritos because I'm like, well, they're easier than like, like hard tacos to eat. And he has made a mess eating a burrito. And I was like, what are you doing? I mean, to be fair, to me, it's less than you can. It's less of a mess, but still, it, it leaks. No, it doesn't. It's it's wrapped on both ends. Like, 
Right, but the <laughs> wrapping as you're going down and eating from one end can get right? loose, and then it kind of slips and then starts. Oh. But see, that's the whole thing. Okay, so oh, I'm gonna have to do a live demonstration sometime and explain about how to eat a burrito, because <laughs> there is a thing about like how you uncover it as you go down on it and as you grab the bottom base of it so that it doesn't like all come out the other side. So yeah, and that's gonna get mm. clipped somehow and turned maybe, into like a maybe most that's something for later. that sounds like something uh, for like my birthday dash. Oh my god! Because <laughs> that's what everybody needs is a picture of me shirtless eating a fucking burrito. Oy. I'm sure yeah. some people Easy would love that. Up. Oh, I'm sure. Anyways, we did so... do, we did do a let's talk about sex about food. That's right, we did because uh, I think Adrian and Peter were our guests, mm -hmm. and Peter has not let me forget it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Pete likes to bring up about like how he has no problems with food and he thinks I'm squeamish about it when mm -hmm. it comes to sex. Uh -huh. No, you're about in that case it's more about cleanliness. I'm just like Yeah, like food the whole is story fine about in general, taking, but Yeah, like the whole story about taking the pie or the strudel or whatever the fuck it was, the pastry thing and just swishing it all over your body and having it eaten off. I was like, no girl. Mm. No. It's um, not the sticky mess you're looking for. No. We've also we've also done uh, let's talk about sex on bottom friendly food. We tend to equate a lot of things with sex. If you didn't notice that by this episode so far, <laughs> or by the general theme of this show, anyways, it's all about sex in some way, shape, or form. You gotta so, eat to have the energy you need to have sex. So we had talked about the whole thing and I was excited because it came up with a burrito box, but I have learned a lesson since then. If you don't order through the app and you're not paying attention and you go through the drive through because you're in a hurry and it's your lunch break, you're probably going to get a burrito box with hard tacos in it because mm. you have to know how to right order the right one. And I wasn't paying attention. So I drive away and I reach into the box and I'm on my way back to work for on my lunch break. And sure as fuck, it was half tacos and half burritos. And I was like, fuck me. God damn it. So, listen, learn, pay attention to that kind of shit. Pay attention. Yeah. So, that being said, uh, we finally decided that we're going to make it official. <laughs> we're going to make a new series. I'll, uh, because we are the series, like, Royal Highness is a podcast. Apparently, we everything is a series now. <laughs> I mean, one of my one of my uh, COL uh, 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 family podcast the uh, slash videos dreams uh, would be to have a show like I would probably name like Cub Eats or something like that. Mm. It would probably end up being like COL Eats because that's kind of the theme is whenever I do a spinoff show, it's mm -hmm. COL something. Mm -hmm. COL gotcha. movies and COL Drag Race. Yeah. So, the, for, so welcome to the uh, inaugural kickoff. Is it inaugural? What is it? Inaugural, yes. Yeah. Kickoff episode of Let's Talk About Food. Uh, Yay! Subject is all-time faves um so these are personal favorites of ours that we enjoy time and again and as i had said and now i gotta go pull up the chat because i forgot how i phrased it um could be specific recipes uh food from notable locations things that you've had once or a few times and never again and you were on the hunt um to mm. find those type of things again um you know, kind of like your, and sometimes, I mean, personal phase can be go-tos. Like, when I go to this place, I always get the same thing. Because it is great, it is reliable, like, meets my needs. Mm-hmm. Like a good sex partner. <laughs> <sighs> what? Well, every time. Just saying. Back to sex. Yes, of course. So, I would have to say that if I was to pick one 
meal. Not necessarily that it would have like all, all the time, but to be my top fave would probably be based more on frequency that I eat it and how I enjoy it every single time I do it. Mm-hmm. And that's grilled cheese and tomato soup. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I heat the griddle while I assemble the sandwiches. And I, 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 so, butter, butter, I butter the bread and then uh, put Parmesan cheese, uh, pepper, and then sometimes I'll like put either garlic powder or garlic salt, something garlicky. Then I would take the, the buttered sides, right. And then I would take okay. the, the buttered sides and then uh, put them on top of each other. So I would have each sandwich butter side in the middle. Basically, it's kind of like a way of like pressing down, making sure the toppings on, on that butter side kind of squish together and get into the butter. And then I, on top of that, I, I put my cheese in that. Right now, the theme is at least three different cheeses. Cheddar, okay. uh, pepper jack, and uh, Munster. Mm. Interesting choices. I, I didn't want to go with like Colby Jack because that's basically kind of like taking the other two and just putting in one the same cheese. And I'm like, I could just get another second slice or something like that for that. So I wanted to go with something else. And I found at least kind of perusing on, I didn't want to do like a slice of mozzarella. I didn't want to do mm -hmm. that. I'm not a fan of Swiss. Oh. Um, and uh, Gouda and provolone don't quite work with it. But for some reason, Munster kind of works. I don't know. Huh. It's been working fine. Fine for me. And then I lift the top. Uh, then I lift the, the slice that the, the cheese is on, put it onto the preheated grill. And then the buttered side is up for the other side. After I put those on the grill, I put those on top. Usually, because it's preheated grill, I can do about five minutes on one side, flip, and then like three or four minutes on the other side. Mm. And then, and then the tomato soup has to be used. You have to make with milk, not with water. It is very. Is it? If if you are lactose intolerant, this is not the meal for you. <laughs> I mean truth with all the cheeses and the milk so question mm -hmm. do you is your tomato it's Campbell's soup, tomato soup thank you that's what I was looking for is it is it always Campbell's or do you like jump around a little bit do you try you know because you know there's a there's a, I mean, there's in a, a pinch a... in a pinch I'll get like the store brand because for some reason they don't have any tomato soup Mm -hmm. cans on the shelf in a pinch but in, in a pinch, general store-bought will do right in a pinch <laughs> if for some reason i have the i have the can of of condensed tomato soup but for some reason i don't have milk on hand i'll go ahead and go with the water okay it's not as good also well yeah also when i first had this and this part of this is because I grew up with this. For lunches, I would like walk home for lunch. My mom would have grilled cheese sandwiches and tomato soup. Not as like going all fancy smancy with the cheese or everything. It was just like two slices of bread buttered in each side with a slice of American cheese between the two. Maybe two slices. But still. So because I've had it for so long, and especially using milk, she used skim milk. Eventually I graduated to whole milk which makes it a little more creamier for the the uh, tomato soup. And and I have been known to add into my uh, tomato soup some Parmesan cheese and, uh, okay. a little bit, and pepper. Okay. And spice it up. Have you thought about adding a dollop of sour cream? Not for tomato soup. I wouldn't do that for tomato soup. Especially considering mm -hmm. I already have whole milk in it. 
But alternatively, if I'd made taco soup, which is very, got a lot of tomatoes See. in it, you know, then I will do the the dollop of uh, sour cream. Basically, I would make my tomato soup like what normally is if I was just eating the tomato soup, and then mm -hmm. I would, but I would still make some grilled cheese as accompaniment. Mm. Very nice. Hmm. Simple, easy. You would love. So there's a, I don't know if they're, they're local here. They're local ish, but there's a place called Tom and Chi. And literally, they're tomato soups and cheese sandwiches, but it's also like they go higher end on the sandwiches. Like they make like, um, like briskets and they, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. meant to be grilled melted cheese with something like whether it's, it's like pepperoni it's still or grilled cheese jalapas. sandwiches it's just modifications. yeah like i i have yeah. been known to modify my grilled cheese sandwiches such as um i you know how hot dog packages have 10 hot dogs but hot dog mm -hmm. bun packages have eight packages or eight buns yes um, mm -hmm. what do you do with those additional what uh hot dogs there's plenty of things you can do with it. But one of the things you can do is slice up the hot dog and put that between the cheese of your grilled cheese sandwich. Mm. So I, I make make my grilled cheese sandwich just like I normally do. And usually I, I instead of making two grilled cheese sandwiches for me to eat, I only make one when I do this. Just because for some reason the hot dog just makes it bigger and fuller. Yeah. But I'll, I will put one cheese, two cheese, uh, put in, put on the hot dog, usually in kind of like, I usually end up having nine slices. It's never even, but, you know, who cares? Mm. Put the other slice on top, et cetera, for, for construction of the sandwich. And then cook the same way. Uh, usually for a little bit less because the hot dog is actually adding it. It seems to be adding extra weight and it cooks faster on the first side at least. Hmm. And I have been known to uh, do things like uh, take pepperoni slices uh, on the cheese, uh, in between the cheese, uh, along with, uh, I have like put in just like a dollop of uh, spaghetti sauce to kind of try to make it a, a kind of like a pizza, a grilled pizza sandwich. <laughs> Mm. Except but it's not yeah. using mozzarella, but still. Mm. There's not a lot of them, unfortunately. I was There's just looking at Tom and Yeah. There, so it's a very flexible dish. Yes. You don't have to use these cheeses that I use to to make it. You don't have to go all fancy schmancy with the the, the, the uh, outside as well. Because even when I do the three cheeses, I'm still using four because I've got Parmesan cheese on the outside. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Parmesan cheese also kind of gives it a little bit more of a crusty. Yeah. But there we go. There's one of mine. Would one of you like to share one of your all-time faves? Gary. Off of mute. My <laughs> <laughs> one of my all time go to's is probably a meatball sub sandwich. Really? So in the northeast section of the US, we tend to call them subs. And other places they may be known as grinders. Mm -hmm. Um in New Orleans a lot of people talk about po boys. Mm -hmm. Which are not a, they're, these are not all the same thing, but they have similarities. Similar, to them. yeah. And in some places, they're called hoagies. Yes. So what you're talking about is usually a roughly ten to thirteen or fourteen inch loaf of bread. Kind of looks like a French baguette, but not the same. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> not as dry and crusty. They're usually yeah. very um, airy and spongy. But mm -hmm. when you use them in a sandwich, they have enough 
density to them, enough gluten that they don't disintegrate and fall apart. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, this goes back to my young bar drinking days. Um, <laughs> because after going out and, and dancing and drinking, I would go to a local convenience store chain. And now, not well, it's really not as popular anymore. It used to be when you would go into like grocery stores or convenience stores, especially in off hours, they would have pre made wrapped sandwiches. Mm-hmm. And so my thing was I would go in and I would buy like a 16 or 20 ounce chocolate milk and get myself a six inch cold meatball sub. And that was perfect. And that was my sobering up on my way home kind of like snack food thing. Okay. I'm curious about the chocolate milk. <laughs> what about it? Chocolate milk is great. <laughs> I mean, he has a point there. I mean, I, it's just fair. It's, it's milk. But, it's got vitamins and minerals in it. Calcium. It's healthy. And we've added a shitload of sugar and cocoa powder. <laughs> just, but I mean, what case? I, uh, I just that the taste combination it, it's in like, my mouth. I, I'm gonna have to agree with David oh, here. Uh, it's just yeah. Why with <laughs> like the com- a meatball sub? Yeah, the combination in my mouth is kind of like mm, I don't know if I'd like those flavors together. <laughs> well, I will say this. Remember, I've just been drinking. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. that's true. So, you probably. I mean, that helps. The through but... line. The through line is fat. <laughs> fat in the chocolate milk. Fat in the cheese. Fat in the meatball. Like, I got you. I got it. Yeah, that makes red sense. carbs to fill you up tomato sauce that's been sugared like got it not so really sugar, healthy fat fat and fat and relatively <laughs> cheap and yeah and Rel- yeah. relatively like yeah so but i have always been a sucker for a meatball like sub like a sandwich mm-hmm. um but i i and my in my old age um <laughs> i've become a bit of a piss ant about meatballs like oh i really unless i'm drunk i really want real meatballs these oh. isolate soy protein with some pork or beef like meatball things that you buy in the store that are so cheap they're okay but that's not what i want girl <laughs> let me tell you something okay <laughs> So again, I love my partner to death. <laughs> but however, I hear a butt coming. But yeah. However, one of the things he we've gotten he's gotten into in the past are the 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 bag of meatballs. Right. Right. Um, and you know uses them in like different meals, like especially you know especially like spaghetti meatballs, which is fine. However, like I just don't like the taste and texture of them. Um, if like the last time we had them, um, uh, we had them, we actually had them like a couple of weeks ago or a week or so ago. And he actually like, like roasted them in the, in the, um, oven and they got a little like crispy and I was okay with that, but I want like a, a real meatball with like meat and breadcrumbs and egg and onion and parmesan and and parsley and you know something like just like put together plopped on yeah i want i i love real meatballs once i've had real meatballs i can't have the other ones not the, not frozen ones fresh yeah. made made meatballs mm-hmm. well meatballs. so and here's the thing i've had all kinds of different meatballs over the years i will say that i'm i have a preference for like a tri blend Mm. So like ground beef, ground pork and ground veal, mm. um, three meat mix, sometimes known as a meatloaf mix mm. in some regions. Um, I'm OK with them having Italian seasoning or not. Mm-hmm. I have also had them, uh, which I haven't really experimented with. I have to look up recipes and play around with them with like little bocaccini in the middle. Mm. So it makes a big fat meatball, mm-hmm. like like bigger than normal nuts on a man, like big, 
fucking meatball. Keyword um, normal. Right. Uh, um, and then when you slice through, then there's a uh, little yeah. mozzarella bocatini ball in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, fucking love yeah. that. So, uh, but yeah, I'm a huge fan of like an oven roasted, uh, you know, meatball kind of thing. There are some companies out there that mass produce them as 100% all meat. Uh, the the Pride Picnic that I've co kitchen coordinated with Jr. for years. He and I a couple of years ago went with some. We ordered them from a factory from a company out of mm-hmm. Chicago. Um, oh. You know their grandma's recipe. You know blah 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 made, and they make them in all sorts of different sizes. Um, and I was really happy with them. Mm-hmm. Mm. Incredibly tasty. Um, they had been oven fried quote unquote not really fried but you know um speed cooked mm-hmm. and stuff so they come frozen and then you just have to throw them in sauce mm-hmm. let them cook um i think we ended up cutting them in half because of the size that i got i think i got a three ounce which is a pretty big meatball mm. um so yeah like it's just one of my things so a, a a meatball you know sandwich meatball sub sandwich is kind of one of my go-to's that um I think it's because it's comforting. Um, if it's done really well and made with really good meatballs and a nice, like, well cooked and seasoned sauce with some provolone melted over top, and it gets mm-hmm. super stretchy, cheesy, like, yeah, it's just, it's just the thing. Like, I would, I rank it above like a Reuben, and I love Reuben sandwiches. Wow, but. Mm-hmm. I think there's something about the simplicity, like less ingredients, but more well made mm-hmm. that can elevate it. So, Makes and, sense. you know, up here in our region, like if you get a sub sandwich, it has a tendency to come with chips or fries. Um, mm-hmm. For those of you abroad, that's uh, chips or crisps. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> I, was yeah like, I just realized I said the same that's thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah like that's sure. one of my all-time faith like go to is like my common mm-hmm. well i mean i'm sure there's yeah. like others but i remember a good time there where i would frequently like go to uh uh subway and order the meatball subs mm-hmm. and the only things that were on the only toppings i had on it toppings quote unquote uh was cheese and parmesan cheese <laughs> and that's it so I have gotten them several times from Subway at my old uh, job that I was at for a long time. There was a Subway in the plaza. So that was like the place you always went mm-hmm. for a quick lunch. Um, I would if I got a meatball sub, I would get a meatball sub with provolone, um, Italian or oregano sprinkle. If I don't mm-hmm. even know if they still do that anymore. But harm. Yeah. And uh, more often than not, I would put banana peppers on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. yeah, because I wanted a little kick. A little heat, not super hot. Um, I have a tendency to like vinegary foods. Like I'm okay mm-hmm. with that. Um, some people aren't. Hence, like Reuben with sauerkraut, and like I enjoy pickles and yeah. But some people, that's not their that's not their gig. So yeah, like it just kind of depended on the moment. And if I got really wild, I would have them put fresh spinach in, mm. which might be controversial for people. Because they mm. probably don't think about spinach and, and red sauce together, but yeah, that's fine. That makes sense. Yeah, pizza. <laughs> I, I, I could. No, sp- spinach is fine for me. It, it's one of those things where it's like it's not my jam, but I'm not going to yuck your yum for it. It's. But I did one of the things I liked about the the subway ones is, I liked having them wrap it up and actually wait a little while, because some of the sauce would soak into the bread. And start, mm. it, it just for some reason, just it it helped make everything meld together, and also like the cheese would melt. Never ever have it toasted. You so you just toast want this bread, right? You want the you, you never. I I don't want it toasted. I want everything, all the bread, soft and squishy. Mm. And it's Stop just me. like tasty, tasty, tasty. <laughs> Although it's funny, 
<laughs> like you're like sitting here talking about squishy bread with like your meatball sub, and I'm like, no, ew, gross. And I'm about to talk about bacon cheeseburgers. So, um, <laughs> go on. So, one of my all time favorite foods, um, um, it actually is, I just found out it's no longer around, it's permanently closed. Um, there's, when I was in college, there was a place called Mario's Pizza. Um, and they were one of the few, cause it was, it was a small town, um, college and they were one of the few places that was open quote unquote late. And we're talking like one o'clock or two o'clock and like as late as like one in the morning. So it was one of the few places you could like order food after like going to classes or, or, or like a late night kind of meal um but i didn't care for their pizza the pizza was okay but i didn't i didn't particularly care for it but the thing i care for the most was they had um a bacon cheeseburger that was uh, amazing um burgers in general are a a favorite like Mm -hmm. just if you want to like i'll have a burger like Grilled meat, cheese, put it on a, pat, a bun, I'm I'm good to go. No matter what the bun is, usually I'm okay. Um, except for maybe proper nickel, but that's another story. Um, but their bacon cheeseburger was, it was a half pound burger, but it wasn't like a thin like burger. It was a thick one. And they were always cooked well done which now I'm not the biggest fan of, but in general, it was always a well-done burger. It was American cheese, and the favorite part for me was their bacon. Very rarely was the bacon ever, like, soggy or or, or limp. Mm-hmm. It was always a crispy bacon. I don't know if they cooked it be- again before they put it on a burger. Whatever the fuck they did... It was it was always good, and I would get that bacon cheeseburger, and they had beer battered onion rings, and that was my like go to late night, well anytime most of the time you know kind of like food to have just like after you know being out or going well we didn't drink I didn't drink much in college but in general just like. Uh, I would order it and I would be good. That would be the thing for me. Um, um, as I said, they have clothes, which is kind of sad, but um, I wish I knew when they closed. That would help a lot, but I can't find that out right now. Did you? Did it have uh, have any toppings on it besides the, the cheese and bacon? Um, it had... Was it just a straight up... It had mayo. I w- it had mayo... And I don't like tomato on my, um, like, I don't like sliced tomato. I don't like raw tomato. Well, no, that's not true. I'm not a big fan of, like, big slices of tomato. Like, on a burger. Right. On a burger. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I think it had lettuce. I'm pretty sure it had lettuce. I don't recall. Because <laughs> I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't really caring so much about the, the lettuce. I wanted the meat and the cheese and the bacon and the onion rings. Ketchup, mustard at all, or just, I don't think it had. Mayo. No, I think it was just mayo. Okay. It was very simple. It was good and simple. And I don't like again. I don't know what meat they use. I, you know, I'm sure it was like a just like a regular ground beef, but we if I could find and cooked it. And... Yeah, something about it is just like so good. I'm I'm sitting here trying to find. Um, you can make incredible stuff based off of how you season and cook something. Yeah. Um, well, it's not. Uh, they said the menu's out there. Uh, I'm trying to find stuff, but it won't. Ha- I won't be able to find it. So, anyway, and, people, and it was like, and people don't understand how good mayo is on a on a burger. Yeah. Some people just don't understand that, especially if you put it. If you put it on the bun on the bottom, 
and you put the beef, oh. the, the fresh off the grill, fresh off the grill ham, hamburger on top. That's still kind of like a little drippy from the juices. And then you just kind of let it rest there for a little bit. And then the juices mix with the mayo. It's so good. Uh, no. Mayo on top. Mayo on top with the with the condiments. It's the whole McBLT or DL whatever McDLT. <laughs> you keep the hot, the hot side, side hot, hot and cold, cold, side, cold. cold side cold. Oh God, I doubt anyone. Jason Alexander was in that in that <laughs> commercial. Yeah, but that was like that was always, that has always been my thing. I like like when they come together. I'm like it. You know, obviously it it'll warm up, but it I like it to separate and then throw it together and then. Oh, so good. I mean, everything else. Oh, yeah, I'm just talking oh. about the mayo. No, the I mean mayo. that. Like, the mayo stays on one side. The mayo is on top. The mayo is with the lettuce and, and like, the like the condiments. So if I get a burger with ketchup and mustard and, and mayo and anything like that, that's staying on the top bun. Like, right. Ketchup, mustard, top. Mayo yeah. on the bottom. For you, not for me. <laughs> to eat your own. Anyway. Because <laughs> I like mayo to taste like mayo. If it's a chipotle mayo, it's a chipotle mayo. If it's, an, if it's a basil mayo, it's a basil mayo. I like to taste that, like, tanginess of, of the mayo somewhere in there. Mm. Um, <sighs> I really want a bacon cheeseburger now. <laughs> I knew that was going to be a problem with the series. It's all right. But we, we this is why we what need about, to make sure we eat before we talk about this stuff. But that's I did. Fun. That's the problem. No, I'm just saying <laughs> that's what we need to make sure we do during the series. Anyway. Um, any go-to or all-time favorite restaurants? Well, I, I got. I got. I actually was thinking of, uh, of something else, but for restaurants, okay. Well, we'll mm -hmm. talk restaurants since it, since you said it first. Sure, it, it, it's totally fair. Uh, but to restaurants, it comes a kind of a difficulty because it, it, there's places where I kind of like have memories, but of course menus change, so and like times change, and because we used to go to Perkins. I'm not sure if they had it in your, your area, but we would go to Perkins, and I, I think I would order the same sandwich. I don't even remember what I ordered because I haven't been to a Perkins in forever. Um, but me and my, my high school friends, would that was our late night thing, was going to going to Perkins. Mm. Um, uh, which so was Perkins great. was open 24 hours. Yeah. Um, I did not know a damn thing about Perkins until I moved here to Cincinnati in 2002. And it is delightful. Mm -hmm. They have Perkins in Cincinnati? I mean, so, okay. <laughs> so, the first Perkins I went to was technically in Kentucky. Um, it was in it was in Highland Heights, Kentucky, which is where Northern Kentucky University is. Um, and there was a Perkins over here, actually not too well, a little bit from the house. Um, maybe 10 minutes away from the house, but it closed um, recently. I think prior to COVID, but it was definitely, it, it closed. So I don't know where another Perkins is right now. Gary does. Gary. Um, well, we had a handful of them here in Erie. Um, oh. I had one growing up like two miles from my house. Oh, nice. Um, and I have one less than two miles from my, where I live now. Uh -huh. um, and there was one walking distance from the host hotel for the event. Um, uh -huh. That one has closed, fortunately. So there was a bit of a big shakeup recently um, with locally for us with the franchise owner and not paying their money due to the franchiser. Oh. Oh, yes. So they got their stuff revoked. And then there was like a court case and a whole bunch of hubaloo. Um, so the one next to the host hotel ended up getting closed completely. Um, the one next to where I was born, grew up, I think is still operational. The one that's near me, um, is still operational, but understandably right now, 
our restaurants and everything are, are outdoor only. So mm-hmm. because they don't have outdoor patios or whatever, it's purely takeout mm. um, or delivery if you go through like a delivery food service. So, yeah. Good Lord. So the closest one to me now is t- almost 10 miles away. Oh, that's not true. Anyway. Anyways. Yeah. But go ahead. Uh, I'm going to yeah. have to actually list off three. But we don't necessarily have to go too far in depth to all of them because two of them, I don't think there's any near either of you guys. Uh, But this is all because of of Austin. Well, one of them not because of Austin, but uh, like in any ways. But uh, the Austin ones are uh, Rudy's for barbecue. Uh, Despite any other, other barbecue place in... Uh, Austin, at least. Uh, maybe all of Texas. I don't know. I haven't really visited that many barbecue places in outside of Austin. But I like their barbecue the best. Uh, brisket. Uh, uh, just just their whole atmosphere at the place. Uh, e- even their uh, shredded is it shredded beef. I don't remember what it is, but all of it is just good. Good food. It's very like sit down, rustic. Don't worry about it, Siri. Not now. I'll deal with you later. <clears throat> um, but it, it's great. So if you're ever if you're ever in like the Texas or anywhere near any sort of Rudy's, uh, even pick up a bottle of their barbecue sauce, which I absolutely love. I love their barbecue sauce. Uh, second is Kirby Ling, which is kind of the more of the breakfasty sort of place it's kind of like the uh more localized version of an ihop except Mm -hmm. like good food uh i absolutely love their paris texas platter which is french french toast and migas um which is delicious um well i kind of prefer the atmosphere of the kirby lane that's on literally named kirby lane uh in downtown uh it's I feel like it's fine going to any of the Kirby lanes and good food. But the one Mm -hmm. that I say, which is more national that I absolutely love. And I, not every time, but I do have kind of what I would refer to as my signature dish there uh, is Applebee's. So the big box, Mm -hmm. box restaurant stores, you know, like uh, I prefer Applebee's. Mainly because of one dish, and that's the uh, Bourbon Street steak. Mm. It, it normally comes with like uh, like the the fried potatoes, not the French fries, but you know, like chunks of potatoes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I forgot what they call that. Um, I usually actually ask to swap out loaded mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. And it's, it comes with a Cajun seasoning and uh, mushrooms and onions, and grilled mushrooms and onions, mm-hmm. all on a sizzling uh, uh, cast iron plate, skillet-ish mm-hmm. sort of thing. And it's so good. I used to eat steak with uh, steak sauce. I don't need it for this if you're more of a steak sauce person. Um, definitely not. It's seasoned perfectly, is delicious, and I love cutting up. Uh, cutting, <laughs> I, I I'm, I'm a, a huge fan of casseroles in general, um, and there's a reason why I say that. I like to cut up the steak completely, take the mashed potatoes, the onions, and just like mix it all together, <laughs> and, she, and just take uh, take bites of that in just one big glop. And that's mixing up like the steak juices and the uh, uh, Cajun seasoning and the sour cream and onions and uh, potatoes all in one big bite. It's just divine. Mm. Oh, mm. Occasionally I'll get like just like an appetizer platter or something like that. Uh, but most of the time... If I'm going to have this and then have a nice big tall beer to go along with it. It's great. Bourbon Street Steaks at Applebee's. And I like Applebee's. 
That's me. Restaurant. <laughs> Damien, Gary, either. Um, so <laughs> I, tend, I tend not to get hung up on dishes at, at chains. Mm hmm. That's fine. Well, yeah. usually, usually because I don't, I mean, I go to chains often, but actually most of the chains I go to are fast food just because of convenience. Um, if I really want a quality dish that I don't usually go to a chain. Um, mm -hmm. And I realize that's pretty shady, but like having worked in the restaurant industry, I, I understand the whole like commissary, like central kitchen concept and things are sent and it's not really cooked at the location. It's prepared there. Mm -hmm. So they're opening boxes and bags and things and just heating Got stuff it. Up and finishing things. <laughs> they're not really cooking. Oh um, my god. Big shocker. A lot of places that you see, especially these, they have a whole bakery section. Yeah, they're usually not really baking. I don't give a shit. I used to work for Eaton Park. I know some of their <laughs> secrets. Like there are very few things they actually make from scratch. Just saying. Fair enough. So, um, yeah, like I don't uh, like uh, there are some things that have been discontinued that bum me out. Like, um and I'm, let me think if I get the chain right lone star steakhouse uh, i think you mean is there's there's longhorn maybe it's longhorn i know it's not texas roadhouse okay yeah hold on uh, there's a lone star oh where does lone star steakhouse hold on horn uh, that sounds like a place near here because there's Oh, it is the Lone Star Steakhouse and Saloon. I need a logo, fuckers. <laughs> yeah, LoneStarSteakhouse.com. Uh, so yeah, Longhorn Steakhouse at one okay. time had a seven pepper steak. Ah. So um, it was basically, and what it was is it was a seasoning they could put on any steak. And I haven't been to that restaurant establishment in years, like mm. probably six, seven, eight years at this point. But we went we went for like a birthday party. Gosh, this was back when my grandma was still around. And I remember that's when we went and we had gone there once for like a birthday thing. And that's where I ended up having the steak. Mm -hmm. My mom said, you know, where did I want to go? I said I didn't really care. Um, and she asked if it was OK if we went there. I was like, sure, I don't care. Um, and on the menu, they had a seven pepper strip steak. Mm. so the steak of course is you know fire grilled to your preference and then they do the seasoning and the seasoning is literally seven different uh pepper corn grind mm -hmm. um so there's black pepper there's szechuan there's white pepper um there's a i think another a pink pepper corn but that's all it was like it wasn't anything crazy mm -hmm. um and they stopped making that menu item because i'd gone back like a year later and i didn't see it on the menu oh no that's not true i saw it on the menu but it was on salad like it was a weird choice that they had steak tips on salad with the seasoning hmm. yep and they still have it jeff's like looking it up right now you guys can't see it but we can't what he's doing on this yeah, <laughs> seven, seven pepper sirloin salad yeah. And so I asked the, the waitress, waiter, whoever it was, I said, hey, I noticed that you have a seven pepper sirloin salad. And they said, yes. I said, that used to be a strip steak. And they immediately said, if you want, we can put that seasoning on anything. And I said, really? <laughs> and they said, yeah. And I said, because I really like that seasoning. Then you have um, the entire menu to work from. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um I'm glad to see they still have it, at least for the salad. That means it must be selling, that people like it. Because it's not hot spicy. It's that pepper mm -hmm. grind spice. So it's not, you know, Scoville scale. It's you know, peppery. it doesn't come with... Right. It spicy. doesn't come with pepper and onions. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> You know uh, that seven pepper shit? We can put that on anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just seasoning. Um... So, yeah, like I was happy that I went back a second time and now I see that they still have it at least online listed on the menu. 
on a salad, so I could technically still order it as a seasoning. Um, so it's not gone. Uh, but I do want to talk about like something I wish that people that corporate powers would bring back because I am yeah. very much upset about this. Uh oh. So it has been said ever since I was a real small child that like Erie is a test market. I do okay. not agree with the fact that it's a test market because I don't really see things getting tested here anymore. <laughs> I think we are kind of more modern America or middle America in that we mm -hmm. just we get things as they trend mm -hmm. and companies try things out. And if they don't work, then they just don't bring them back. OK, so I'm going to talk about something that is not the McDonald's McRib or a Shamrock Shake, which are uh -oh. things that classically are seasonal that come back. Uh huh. I'm going to talk about something that existed at one time and has never, ex never again existed. What is that? It is. It was redubbed by me the AKA Whitney Crack Milkshake. <laughs> okay. Which is completely inappropriate. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Arby's made a creme brulee milkshake. Oh, and Jeff is looking it up right now. I know. <laughs> it was it was a seasonal holiday uh, milkshake that they brought in. There you go. So it was vanilla base. And what they did was they had these um, creme brulee crystals. Um, kind of think about like turbinado sugar. Mm -hmm. Like the brown sugar crystals, only yeah. they were they were not the same thing, but similar. Oh. So and that and like a um, sort of like a caramel sauce mm -hmm. uh, that was swirled inside, you know, the edge of the cup. And then it was just like, my God, this stuff was crazy. So good. Like make your toes curl like you're having an orgasm in a cup and kill your pancreas all at the same time. And they did away with the fucker. Did not bring it back. So the following fall season, we get we get pumpkin spice milkshakes. As a, a former co-host, uh, Robert would say, pumpkin spice. Anybody? Right. I, I gotta have that sound bite somewhere. And then <laughs> after the pumpkin spice, then they went into creme brulee, and then they went into, I think, like peppermint mocha or eggnog as their like winterish holiday kind of flavor. And creme brulee was in between, and it was for like a month. And I had that milkshake once a week, if not twice a week. I was addicted. Other people tried it. Damon, you were on mute. And I'm just laughing. I'm laughing. I know, but I see you rocking back and forth. <laughs> Cannot explain how horribly addicted and good that shit was. Yeah. <laughs> Still annoyed and, and mad to this day. <sighs> annoyed to this day. I just, I have no fathomable reason why they didn't bring it back other than it didn't sell. And I'm like, how could it not sell? Like, how, how could you could not, not so love good. that? It had no. shards of, of like cracked sugar in it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so yeah. So they still do flavor shakes. Like, don't get me wrong. I used to work for Arby's a long, long, long time ago when I was a teen for a brief time. And I have always been a fan of a Jamocha shake. For those ah. of you that don't know, a Jamocha shake is a chocolate yes. shake, but it has a slight coffee flavor to it. Yes. Like, like a hint of coffee. It is not a coffee milkshake. Correct. So, so fucking good. Now, if you want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you like to try that, like to me, it's kind of like. Like, I get that every once in a blue moon when I have a hankering, it's kind of like a Wendy's Frosty. Like, mm -hmm. it's very dessertish. Um, yeah, was, was mm -hmm. one of those things. So, so the last yeah. time it was spotted, it was back in 2014. Oh, yeah. 
Still bitter to this day, bitch. It has been almost <laughs> six years since that fucker came out. Not been brought back. Still mad about bitter. it. Still mad Write about a letter. It. Write a letter. Oh, well, fuck that. Like, <laughs> my letter ain't going to do shit to corporate to make it bring back a milkshake for my ass. Mm. So, just, so what was, you're saying is your, your your favorite restaurant is Arby's, except for the fact that they are not bringing back the Carbonate milkshake. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no! Do not put those words out there. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Arby's. I love their their beef and cheddars. He no. Gary yeah. literally will just go to Arby's for the shake. I don't need no sandwich. No, no, I don't no, no, no. Chicken. Like they're, there are some other things. Like I was, I was on a kick for an Arby's cordon bleu, chicken cordon bleu sandwich for a while. Mm-hmm. I do remember um, that. Their their Swiss and bacon. Uh, but I worked that. at Arby's and I know how the roast beef is made. No, ma'am, Pam, <laughs> ain't gonna do it. So sorry. We will we will leave it at that. Considering yeah. I've had Arby's, maybe their practice has changed. Uh, considering <laughs> how, like, it could it meats. could very well. I was very disturbed to see how the roast beef got made, and I was like, nah, "That's a that's a okay. pass." Okay, but move on. Don't kill, get me wrong. Kill the buzz. I have enjoyed them. Arby's curly fries since I was like probably <sighs> ten. Oh, Arby's curly fries. Who doesn't appreciate, first of all, a springy French fry and with that paprika? Yeah. Why Why would you order like... regular fries? That's what I'm saying. Why does Arby's have regular fries? That, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like That, that should have, be just your fries. <laughs> like That should be their thing. Fuck like the regular fries. You need to get curly fries or potato cakes. I, I suppose the there other. are people who just like doesn't. The flavor. If you don't like the flavor of the curly fry, get a fucking potato cake. We ain't got time. Onion rings. Let's talk. Let's talk about rings. potato cakes for a second, shall we? <laughs> so, for people that don't know what a potato cake is, when you go to Arby's, if you get potato cakes, you get a triangular wedge of fried shredded potato in a cake. This is not a potato pancake latka. This is like hash browns oh, and yeah, tater it's basically tot hash, it, had a basically styroid a... baby. Yeah. It's basically it's basically the fast food hash browns like you would get at uh, uh, any any place like uh, if you go to McDonald's it's an oval thing in, in Arby's it's a triangle. Well, Arby's are thicker, yeah, and shorter. Yeah. They're like fatter and thicker. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> compared to like Love a McDonald's fat. hash brown. Are they th- McDonald's th- hash browns th- seem to be greasy. Every time I've ever gotten them. That's what I love about it. Uh, no. That's me. That's I can't, just me. I can't with the sloppiness of the grease. No. <laughs> I want to eat the food, not eat the food, and then use what's left on my hands as lube. Oh, my God. Like oh, my God. No. <laughs> okay. I just pulled up Arby's sides menu. Mm-hmm. I don't see regular fries on here. They may have done away with them. They yeah. may have. They got curly fries, loaded curly fries, mozzarella sticks, jalapeno bite, bites, select locations, onion rings, select locations, potato cakes, or chopped sides up. FYI, their onion rings are shit. Um, oh, anyway. now hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I like their onion rings if I'm really in the mood for onion rings. And I got to okay. say it that way. Because they're real onion rings. Okay. Like they are real I rings mean, of not, onion. Yeah, true. They may they not be not. the best real onion rings, but they're real yeah. onion rings. They're now, here's like why I say real onion rings. rings. Yeah. Because I have been addicted to Burger King onion rings since I was a wee lad. Mm-hmm. And those are not real onion rings. Yeah, because there's, there, yeah, there's mist That's, onion. That's process right. That's processed onion <laughs> formed into a ring and been deep fried. Yeah. Anyway, I mean they're literally onion rings. They're just not rings of onion that have been fried. Well, that's like of it. fudgeons. <laughs> Our fun onions. <laughs> For those of you that can't see, I'm using air quotes all over the place there. I mean, they are made from onions. Oh, I don't think they're made from onions. 
here goes Jeff again looking for shit. Oh boy. Uh, I, I'm just I'm just continuing to pull pull up the RV. Funyuns are onion flavored rings. They are not made of onion. Really? Yep. I thought they actually had onion in them, not just no, like no, onion no. powder. I think they got onion powder. Yeah, they're just flavored. Mm. Yeah, they're they're just like oh. if you take the onion, if you don't use an onion, but you create a uh, a ring of the batter and season it with onion powder, that's a funyun. So Funyuns Jeff, is the brand name of an onion flavored corn snack. Oh, yeah. Jeff, on the RB site, can you look at sliders? Sliders. Uh, That's all they got. Okay. So they're still there. All right. Okay. <laughs> no, no, because I actually enjoy their sliders. I don't get the roast beef, but I have gotten the turkey and cheese, chicken cheese, um, the pizza slider. When it first came out, was really good. And then they got like they got a little strange with it. I don't know what the story was there. Mm -hmm. um, and I still don't care for the way they, they package them. Oh? They put them in like a half a cardboard box, but they always set them up on end. Oh. Oh, yeah. So take your sandwich and turn it sideways. Well, then the cheese that's melted like pools at the bottom of the cardboard. Mm. I'm like, why do you do that? Put it in the thing and then set it in the bag sideways like a normal sandwich gets stacked, you dipshit. Could, could you like put it in a regular size size box, just like four of them, like in a quarter the right side up? Instead no, of, like, they're too half big. Half a box and turn it over to the side. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't had any of their sliders. I, my default uh, at Arby's is the beef and cheddar, which has the kind of a, like the onion bun. I don't know, something like that, which is in the the gooey um, uh, cheese sauce. Uh, also, I I have been known to like their French dips because of the ajou. Mm, damn it! It's delicious. <laughs> no roast beef for Gary. We have established. Um, I mean, I've don't get me wrong. I've had roast beef. Uh, I've had roast beef sandwiches. I've had like like roast beef is like you know part of a dinner or whatever but it is real roast of beef carved mm. like like legit so yeah um yeah so anyways yeah arby's may have the meats but they don't have my fucking milkshake and they're not bringing it back so <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favorite restaurant oh uh since we went out I think he, about Arby's. Well, he, 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 he mentioned his... I thought, didn't you? What's up? Didn't you mention your favorite restaurant? Like, that you don't normally go to... Like, you tend to... Your all-time favorite restaurant. I thought you mentioned it, but maybe I'm wrong. You mean it this episode or previously? This episode. Oh, no. Um, I have a couple of restaurants that are, like, high on my list... Neither of the two of them I can think of right now are in Erie. <laughs> Notably. <laughs> um, the closest one is in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. you've, you've been with me, Damon. Yes. To Lucky's Cafe in Tremont, mm -hmm. a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Chef Heather Haviland is a sweetheart. Um, there isn't hardly anything I've ever had at that place that I would not order again. Mm -hmm. Um like, you know, the shipwreck, uh, normally I go for breakfast. Let's clarify that. They're normally open for breakfast, uh, brunch hours um, for the dining portion. And they also run a, a coffee house section in the front with um, amazing desserts. Um, so I normally would always probably get the shipwreck or the mac and cheese that's there. Um, I've loved that food so much. I have ordered one dish there and got a dish to go. And I've told the staff that I'm getting like I usually would get the mac and cheese to go. And then the staff will bring it out when you're when you get your bill and then they'll talk to you about when you take your mac and cheese home. This is how you should reheat it. Mm. And reheat. the applesauce, mm. the, the grapes, like the stuff is on the side separate. Please keep it cool. Like like yeah. the, it's just I love how they handle 
like things like conceptually um, thinking about that. But yeah, so I'm um, and overall, I guess that's like the one I, I think of. And it's so funny because I was like, I know there are restaurants I go to that I always get the same thing every blank dang time. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, Christ. Someone said I got fireworks. <laughs> you guys probably can't hear that. But earlier I was like, oh, we can. Hell is that noise? Well, those are kind of close and loud, but um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, one of my all-time favorite restaurants, believe of like, and this is just mostly a chain mentality that I can always go to and never be disappointed. Um. Believe it or not, it's like O'Charlie's. Um, that's been a favorite of mine since I was young. We used to go after church. We, you know, it's um, uh, yeah, the second one, yeah. Um, it's a definitely a chain restaurant. It's a lot of you know decent foods. Um, I the best thing for me is usually I hate to say it, they're fucking like bread. That they, their rolls that they bring to the table. If you've ever been there, you can, no matter what you order, um, generally, I mean, you should probably have to order like something, like an appetizer or some kind. They will normally bring you a basket of rolls. Mm. They're um, warm. They always have butter on the side. They're They're probably filled with sugar. <laughs> I mean, just to be honest, let's be honest, y'all. Um, but they're they're just great. And um like I look at them now, like there's one literally a block or two away from the house. Um but um like they they've gone this very southern restaurant route. I don't remember them being that southern growing up, but whatever, I don't care. Um, the favorite thing for me, because I just saw <laughs> I saw it as it just passed by the menu. Um, Wednesdays are always free pie Wednesday. So if you order an entree, you get a piece of pie. Girl. And their pies are pretty good. So they've got like a app like a double double crusted apple pie. They've got cherry pie. They have my favorite pie of all time, which is pecan pie. Um, and then their French silk pie. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, uh, oh, it's double crusted cherry. I thought so. Country apple <laughs> Couldn't pie. Couldn't remember. Yeah. But but uh, it does say our award-winning old-fashioned double crust pie filled with sweet, crisp Michigan apple seasoned with delicate Ah. Uh, so it is double crusted. They just... just the, don't right. call it double crusted. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. Um, and 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 like I said, it's so free pie Wednesday. Like you go and you get a fucking piece of pie. Um, you know, whenever you you know go there on a Wednesday. So I like I said, I've I enjoy them. I've not had. That's not true. My favorite, my go to for them, um, are their um, um, chicken o tenders. Um, they are um, double breaded and fried, um, lovely pieces of chicken, and yeah, like there, yeah. Oh, Charlie's famous chicken tenders. They are so fucking good. Um, they're good a second time around because they just heat up so well. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm sold on on them. Like that's one of my like if I if like. If I have to go to a chain, mind you, this is like a go-to chain for me. Um, a general all-time favorite restaurant that I've been going to recently that's a smaller chain here in town is called um, Cancun. It is a Mexican restaurant. And they have authentic Mexican food, and it's really fucking good. One of my favorites there, they have a Leon special, which is um, grilled shrimp and chicken 
in a spinach sauce with rice and beans on the side and their chips and salsa are amazing and just yeah what was this like place again? is this still our charlie's no, this is Cancun. I've I've Cancun. I've gone. I've I've moved on. Sorry, I was I was still like enthralled looking at the Charlie's menu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's one of those things where I I realize like we're all in different areas of the country. So like a, um, I don't know if they're gonna be, um, I don't know if that's gonna be it. That one's an indie. That would be weird. But anyway, sorry. Um, but yeah, Cancun is always Cincinnati. Anyway, yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. There we go. Oh, it looks like them. Oh, they opened in Newport. That's nice. Um, anyway, sorry. Jeff is looking at the website. <laughs> so it's like mental note in future episodes we need another layout so I can show show what I'm looking at. <laughs> oh, but um in general, just really good food, pretty decent service. Um and they're I think they're a small chain. So, yes, they've got a few restaurants, but I'm hoping, like, it's all under the same owners or something along those lines so that it's not, like... Because I know of two near where I live. I now know of the one in Newport. I think they had another one elsewhere. But, yeah. That reminds me of Chewy's. I totally forgot Chewy's. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah. So, definitely a place to try. Um, Again... I didn't get hooked onto them until we moved here um, into the house about five years ago. So there you go. So I'm going to mention it now. Jeff, before you leave there, go back up, go to the app section. Mm. I'm curious about something. Appetizers. Damon probably knows what I'm looking for. Are you looking for? um... Okay. So on their menu, they call it Chora Queso. Uh Uh-huh. Interesting. <laughs> Damon knows. Uh, oh, over a week ago, I think it was. Um, he and I and some others were on uh, having a chat on Saturday night with some gaming, and I got on this whole kick explaining about how I love queso fundido, mm-hmm. and there's a specific kind that I specifically like from a place that's a Mexican restaurant in Springfield, Ohio, and ended up finding a recipe that's that looks pretty damn close to what it is. In fact, I went and bought some of the ingredients specifically to make it, mm-hmm. um, but I didn't end up making it yet. Maybe I'll make it tomorrow. Let's see. Yeah. it's It sounds amazing, and this sounds really good. So that's there's good. that. Flame cheese. It's a dish of hot melted cheese and spicy chorizo. It is mm-hmm. often served flambe. Ooh. Often compared to cheese fondue, it is a party dish. It's popular at cookouts and restaurants as an appetizer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm cool with. Um, I love a cheese dip with meat, like <laughs> like. A, I mean, like in a, ge- general, uh, chili con queso, which is mm-hmm. beef with yep. cheese. Mm-hmm. It's it's I, one of the oh best God. things in all the world. If, if one of my, one of, oh, one of the first things, like I'm like I'm just like recalling, and and one of the things I remember, one of the things, a person in high school, we did a like a food day when I was in high school, and somebody brought in a crock pot. And they had like the, they put like the vel it was fucking Velveeta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and they put like sausage, like Italian sausage mm-hmm. and and other and and threw it in this crock pot. And I about died. I just so, so good. Cause it just it just oh melty and good and delicious and <laughs> 
Put yeah, that on the fucking will... cheese. Throw it on my body. What the fuck ever? I don't care. Just so, all right. <laughs> that, no, <laughs> girl, you're taking it too far. I can't with you. So, <laughs> food Food Network's version, uh, at least from uh, Reed Drummond uh, on Food Network, uh, says it's one pound package refrigerated hot uh, breakfast sausage, a diced onion, one two pound block of processed cheese, such as Velveeta. Mm-hmm. Uh, one 10 ounce can of diced tomatoes and uh, green chilies. Uh, you could probably also, cons- if you need a brand name, Rotel. Um, yeah. Two cans of chopped uh, dice or, or green chilies. Uh, one jalapeno diced. Uh, and of course, tortilla chips. And you get your I was gonna classic say, chili con queso. In the north, I was going to say, in my region, Velveeta and a can of Rotel, that's all you need. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you're going to make like, really basic, the only thing is that's not chili con queso. That's just queso. Right. So, so the the chili part, which is basically meat with cheese, is why it's chili con queso, uh, is like breakfast sausage. You could just use beef if you don't want anything more spicy. I mean, it it's kind of one of those things where it really technically is one of the easiest things to make in all the world. Because you basically take all the ingredients, throw into a crock pot, make sure the cheese melts, keep it warm so it stays melty, you're done. That's pretty much it. So I kind of want brown meat. I'll do that first. Anyways, uh, so side note on uh, restaurants, uh, I totally forgot Chewy's, which is just right up the street from me. Uh, my favorite place, my favorite Mexican uh, restaurant. Uh, I don't remember where they are right now, or how many locations they have, but they've been kind of starting to spread. But they spread oh, in Cincinnati. They've spread all right because they're in Ohio. And yeah, I've been yeah. Somewhere. If you look at the map, they've basically got the entire lower, like, they're probably in like. What is it? Four sixths of an no, not four sixths. Five sixths of the nation. No, no, that's probably a little too far. <laughs> there's a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's like a little more than a third of the nation doesn't have a Chewy's in it. Like, is, it, is the one over here? Did they hit Wisconsin, or are they still in? No, they're in Chicago. They're in Colorado. Oh, they haven't even gotten to New Mexico. Yeah. El Paso is still Texas, and it's underneath Mexico. New Mexico. <laughs> but I believe they actually started in Austin. That, that was the very first one. Uh, but cool. uh, they're right up the street. They are delicious. Uh, I've been frequently known to get their... Uh, Elvis Presley Memorial platter. Where is it? The menu. I, I don't know much about the. I can't because I haven't been in a long time. But what the the thing I love the most from fucking Chewy's is their jalapeno ranch. Like oh yeah yeah they're sauce. it's like, it's do you, it's do you mean like the white nectar stuff. from from Jesus yeah huh um, <laughs> no no he's he's absolutely right. Uh, what do they call it? I, I know it when I'm there. It's the uh, creamy jalapeno. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, creamy jalapeno. So th- they always give you a, a thing of tortilla chips and some salsa, but then you can request some creamy jal- jalapeno, and they'll bring it over, and then it's like everybody ignores the salsa. And eats the... Yep. <laughs> I mean, why would you have salsa when you can have that? Yeah. Uh, when uh, there are dozens of knockoff recipes of that sauce on Pinterest and everywhere else online, you know that the shit is good. Mm-hmm. Like, that is the one thing I will say about Chewy's that I was turned on to. Don't get me wrong. The Mexican food, you know, it's American Mexican, Tex-Mex, but the tortillas made fresh on premises mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. a big win. And that fucking sauce... Mm-hmm. Like that is something you can slather and put on anything. 
Mm. Swear, to, swear to what you believe in. Yes. God, it's so good. Yeah, and we can't see the full menu right now because they've got quarantine menu. Uh, so because they're they're being responsible and limiting staff, they've got a uh, limited one. But one of it is the the Elvis Presley Memorial Platter, which contains a beef enchilada, a chicken enchilada, and a cheese enchilada with three different sauces, one for each of them. Uh, a, and, it, and it's like a big old thing of refried beans and some lettuce mm-hmm. and... Uh, you also get like a, a tostada on the side. It's a lot of food, <laughs> but it's so yes, good. It is. I think I'm pretty sure the last time I went to Chewy's, it was when I was working my previous job and I was in San Antonio for work and we went to one and I'm pretty sure when I went there, who I went with got that dish mm-hmm. and was shocked at how much food they got. And I knew because I had been with people who had ordered before like, like me. Like Didn't if we go you're to hungry, ah, uh, we might have. I know we went to a barbecue joint. Ah, uh, we. I think I took you to Rudy's then. Um, but I know like people who have ordered the Elvis platter, like <laughs> you best be hungry. Yeah, that's not a. Oh, I'll just. I just had lunch. Like I had lunch, and I'm just gonna have dinner. No, that's not like. No, you don't. Go, but you don't go to Chewy's if you just had lunch. Yeah, and you're like you know what a I little mean. hungry. Yeah. Like I mean, I'm probably you, like you can, but all you got to do is drink margaritas and eat chips. That's like that's it. Yeah, maybe you had lunch at like noon, and it's now like eight, seven, eight o'clock, and yeah. I will say that their uh, chili rellenos uh, are delicious as well. I had I've had that uh-huh. one, time, one time as well. So they they do have it's very much Mexican ish. I'm not sure how Mexican, but I I, I think they're. Compared to most Tex Mix restaurants, they're I think they're probably relatively close to uh to to, to being like that. But You mean like as far as Mexican goes? Yeah, I think they're they're they are still Tex Mex, but they're I would I feel that they're close to Mexican. Yeah, I mean uh, having had actual Mexican in uh, Mexico, I would say like Tex-Mex is the closest that you get. And there are like divisions in it and Chewy's as a chain does really well, but that's also part of where the problem therein lies. Like if you want anything authentic from any region, I don't care what it is. It is most likely going to be good to great. If it's at a local establishment could maybe be a local chain, but they have to have a very small number of like locations. And the reason why is because once you spread out and you have multiple locations, you have to centralize your processing to get the same quality every single time someone orders a dish. Mm -hmm. And that becomes problematic because unless you're in the same geographic footprint, you have to get different food vendors and that starts affecting a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm not usually a fan of chains per se, like as a favorite thing, because in order for them to make it consistent, they have to they have to do very specific things. Like this is the way I look at it. Like people can love McDonald's and that's great. But in order to serve billions and to have millions of locations around the world, you have to be able to put out the exact same product every single time. So when you go to that establishment, you are always knowing that a Big Mac tastes like a Big Mac tastes like a Big Mac. Like, doesn't matter if I order it in Hawaii, if I order it, you know, in Abu Dhabi, if I order it in Boston, if I order it in Brazil. Like, it's always going to be the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And that's the that's the upside of a chain is that you should be able to get the same thing. But that's also the, the trouble. The downside is, like, they have to do things in order to be able to make that happen. Yeah, maybe so, sort, sort of things. Which is yeah. interesting, but... That was my side mm. note of a uh, place in Austin that I totally forgot that I really love uh, for all time faves. Uh, hey, guess what, folks? Um, I had another idea for, for something to ask you guys about, but uh, we've been going pretty long. Do you want to try to go for one more little little mini topic? or is it? Or we can save. As I say, is it worthy of a whole show? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Then All right, we just wait. Well, let's save it because I, I feel on this new series we were we're not going to exhaust it for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll hold off. Yeah, 
Uh, like I'll mention it in post show, and we can kind of like refer to okay. whether we want to use it for for a thing. In awesome. any case, uh, that's the end. Do you like us talking about food? Let us know. There's plenty of ways to contact us. Pop over to our website. Uh, come on our blog. That's uh, cubsoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Uh, tell us all your food favorites uh, by voice. You could give us a call at 361 we'll talk. That's 361-265-8255. Um, uh, please, just, just give us a jingle jingle. We'd love to actually hear your voice. You don't even have to say who you are if you don't want to. Uh, you can follow us on various social media outlets at Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, uh, and YouTube at Cups Out Loud in the appropriate places URL. Uh, if you want to just chat us up right now, you can pop over to our Telegram chat at tinyworld.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, if you would like to know when we're planning to uh, post these shit or um, uh, record these shows and uh, also what may, some of our future topics may be, mm, uh, you can uh, subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can get various uh, merchandise at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud such as a version 3 t-shirt uh, which i got in sleeveless uh all of our shirts give options for what type of shirt you want so you know mm. so there is a base model that goes up which is just you know your standard t-shirt but you can get long sleeve short sleeve sleeveless tank tops all of that all the options are there different colors and, and everything you can choose those you can customize them. There's usually a, an edit thing, and you can like put something like your name on the back or something. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, which we've done. I've done for one of my shirts, and um, I did for uh, Mr. Angelini Cook. Um, uh, all at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Outline. Remember, you can do it for your certain countries, so .co, .uk, .ca, etc. All of that works slash Cubs Outline. So, uh, you can also uh, subscribe to us as a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. You get uh, some bonus things such as um, uh, getting the show a little bit earlier, uh, as well as including a recording of the pre and post shows if you aren't able to make it live, uh, such as Lloyd staying up so late. He just <laughs> needs to, you know, a buck a month and uh, he doesn't have to. You can uh, watch mm. it later. And mm-hmm. if you are a patron, you can get other bonuses um, if you have different, if you go to the other tiers. In fact, all of our patrons currently received an email from us to let us know basically that we have some stuff going on. Um, we're waiting on like, I think one or two more to get back to us because uh, most of our patrons are getting a free t-shirt Ooh. from COL um, of their choice Ooh. and their size and their design. They just have to let us know what it is. Um, so that we can send it out. Hopefully those orders will be going uh, here before the end of the month. And um, yeah, I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, Thank you, patrons. If you uh, just want to like, send a little bit of donation or way to help us improve in some way, shape, or form, get carry a new computer, maybe get me a second camera so that they can actually see me besides looking at a camera. Uh, a, a, and me sending them a copy of my screen and still not being able to see me as well uh, in the uh, call. Uh, you can do that by going to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. We also have a link to that donate on our website. So if you forget the link for some reason, uh, you can just go to CubsOutLoud.com, click on donate, and it will take you right there. Uh, click uh, you can also uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, subscribe to us at Google Play Podcasts or on Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Tap Box, Pumpy Box, Cub Box, something or other. Um, I am Theater Cub 79 on most related bear sites as well as Tumblr and Facebook. You can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere as GearBear73. Um, if you're going to like, do a friend request or a follower or whatever, um, and it's because of the podcast, shoot me a message and let me know. Um, some of you recently, I figured out, uh, were following me on Twitter for the naughty, naughty stuff. Um, <laughs> and part of it I figured out because I was like, oh, I got a whole bunch of people who are requested to follow me. I'm like, but I don't know them. And they didn't send me a message. But then I looked at their follows, and I saw that they also follow Cubs Out Loud. 
Oh. So that clued oh. me in that they probably huh. heard me talk about that. And they're like, well, just see, you know, about following Gary and what he likes to retweet on there. So, yeah. Yeah, or I, as I, someone said to me on Friday night when they found out that I was on Twitter and they like wanted to follow and I followed them and then they were like, none of these are of you. And I was yeah. like, your criticism is noted. <laughs> and if you want to see it, you see it in person. That's how that works. Usually... <laughs> Usually, if anything, there is an annual event that Gary is usually at, although he doesn't really have much time. Not this year, but, you know. I get less time as the years go by. <laughs> That's true. Uh, in, very... in any case, uh, please actually give us feedback on how you like Let's Talk About Food. Uh, we want to know if this is actually something that you uh, enjoy and uh, uh, give us your feedback. Uh, we want to hear about this kind of a test pilot. We'd like to know what you have, so please uh, send us for that. In the meantime, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.